Okay, so good morning, everybody, and welcome on a on a frosty morning. We're going to go on a virtual field trip to uh, the area that's actually just outside my window at the moment. Um, so, and we're going to look at some sort of sediment vol uh, lava interaction. But the main thing we're going to do this morning in this kind of three three and a half hour session is we're going to um, we're going to actually learn about the process of building virtual field trips. So obviously virtual field trips have become quite topical in, in the current climate, but it's something that was sort of coming along and growing uh, in momentum anyway. But uh, obviously everybody, lots of, a lot more people are now focused on, on, on how we do it. And, and we've been doing this, this kind of thing for the last sort of, well, almost 20 years now. And, uh, and yeah, so we're going to sort of share some of our learnings, learnings with you today. Um, First disclaimer, I am not uh, an igneous or metamorphic geologist. I have dabbled a little bit, um, but my my main background, as will probably become apparent when we run our little virtual field trip to start with, is my main background is I am a sedimentologist. But I've been working um, with my colleagues in Bergen um, for the last, uh, obviously myself and Jess are based in Aberdeen, but I've been working with my colleagues in, in Bergen where I lived prior to being in Aberdeen. Uh, I've been working on virtual field trips and, and virtual outcrops and, and sort of digital data acquisition. So uh, we've been working on that for, well, since about 2004. So, uh, and a lot of the work I'm going to present today and the software we're going to use was developed by uh, a good friend and colleague of mine in, in Bergen, in Norway, uh, Simon Buckley. And he is the person who's responsible for the for the software that we're going to be using. So you can you can kind of blame him if uh, if, if, if you don't like it. But um, but yeah, um, we'll sort of talk about what the software is and how you get it and, and how you use it and everything as we go. So, but first of all, what I thought I would do um, is I would start with a, a short virtual field trip. Now this is, this is a, a little virtual field trip and we're gonna play around with these data today. Um, it's gonna take about 10 or, or 15 minutes um, maybe, maybe maybe half an hour uh, and it's this is more to show gate, showcase some of the things that you can do uh, and what we can how we can actually sort of present these data rather than being you know specifically a virtual field trip. Jess uh, has uh, my, my co-leader here she has uh, been working with us recently she is a proper igneous geologist and uh, she has been kind of working, she's been preparing a couple of field trips you're going to see this afternoon, uh, which will be obviously a lot more sort of igneous, uh, volcanic, um, volcanic kind of uh, geology focused. So be, uh, so I, 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 well, I guess what I'm doing partly is, apart from anything else, is pleading for a little bit of uh, levity so that um, when I say something silly about volcanic rocks, I won't, I won't be sort of shot down. So um, what I'm going to do start off with is I'm going to pull up the, the software window and I am going to um, I'm going to share my desktop. OK, so this is a software called Lime. I'll talk a little bit more about it um, shortly. Yeah, I've got in the PowerPoint presentation, but first of all, as I said, I just want to give you a flavor for what a typical virtual field trip actually looks like and how and how well certainly how it is when we deliver it. There are a lot of different types of virtual field trip, so uh, and we'll talk a little bit about those uh, in, when we talk uh, when, when I make the presentation afterwards. But this is just specifically how we do it, and this kind of approach has been sort of developed over. Yeah, well, certainly this approach to delivering the virtual field trips has been a, been developed over the last couple of years, and it's been sort of tested. Both we ran uh, a bunch of different field trips last year um, for our students especially our, our kind of petroleum geology master students, but also uh, some of our undergraduates as well. And, uh, and we've also been running trips like this for sort of various oil companies and commercial organizations and things like that. And what, we're, what I'm sort of presenting to you here, that this methodology of developing and presenting has largely come about the kind of learnings we've had along the way. So a typical trip would start like this, you know, with a title and an introduction and some authors and so on. And then we will sort of um, so basically today we are going to look at volcanic sedimentary interactions in the, well, it's actually Silurian, uppermost Silurian and Devonian deposits of northeast Scotland. So Aberdeen, where we are based, is just off the top of this map up in here. Uh, and as we come down this east coast of, of east coast of Scotland, basically that's the, the town of Stonehaven. 
Uh, and the Highland Boundary Fault is basically running, uh, is a big lineament running through this, r running through here. And uh, yeah, sorry, no, actually, no, I'm wrong. Sorry, Stonehaven is just north of north of here in the Highland Boundary Fault, basically just runs along the top of this, uh, the top of this image. So basically we're going to, uh, so there is Aberdeen, uh, St. Syra, the two areas we're going to sort of deliver today, to visit today are Croton, uh, and St. Cyrus with that uh, with the Highland Boundary Fault running sort of just between Stonehaven and, and Aberdeen separating out this sort of Highland terrain from this Midland Midland Valley terrain and all the, the deposits that we're going to look at are um, as I say are uppermost Silurian and Devonian in age so we're going to look primarily uh, at this Croton volcanic formation and the vault on the, and the, and the slightly younger uh, Montrose volcanic formation. So basically everything gets younger as we go along the coastline towards the south and the the fill of the, the, the sort of Midland Valley here, certainly in this coastal section, is dominated by conglomerates, uh, fluvial, fluvial and alluvial fan conglomerates, um, which grade as we go up section, as we go towards the south, those grade into sort of um, more sort of well they're all they're still clastic deposits but more sort of sand sand and mud rich fluvial deposits and interspersed with those at several points along the way are, are different volcanic formations so we've got this this sort of croton the croton volcanics here which is the lowest most volcanics in the succession and then we'll spend a little bit of time um, down at st cyrus looking at the at the montrose um, volcanic formation so that's our sort of um that's our setting, that's where we're going to go. And the first locality we're going to go to is just up here in the north. That's up in Croton. But it's it, it, it's useful to just have a quick look at the at the um, regional geology first before we do that. So we've got our two localities. We've got Croton up here, St. Cyrus, and basically this is the this is the that sort of Upper Silurian Devonian succession, sort of going al along the coastline. And as I said, everything is getting progressively younger as we go towards towards the south. So we're going to start, we're going to head up here to Croton Bay, first of all. Uh, so we're just going to sort of fly into this locality in here. Now what this is, this is that you can see the underlying satellite image just as a frame of reference, but this now is a photorealistic 3D model or what we call a virtual outcrop. Uh, I'll talk a little bit again when I get to my PowerPoint about how these are collected. But they are the, it's basically it's photogrammetric. It's a photogrammetric model with data that are acquired using uh, using in this case a drone. Um, the the resolution is reasonably good. I you, I can fly in. I can see the individual pebbles uh, and boulders on, on the beach in here. You can see the sort of vegetation just to give you some sort of idea of scale in here. Uh, that cliff is about 40 meters high. I can measure that cliff. I'm pretty sure if it's if the cliff is, is is 40 odd meters high. Yeah, 42 meters high. Just to give you a sort of frame of reference, and and basically this this outcrop then is is about half a kilometer, and there's a sort of small cottage at the at the top of the cliff, um, right there. And just for just for reference, that's what that house back there on the satellite image is where I'm currently talking to you from now. So if we just look at the, um, if we just sort of bring in some additional data into this, this is a, a log from a guy called Peter Horton, did his PhD out here uh, quite a long time ago. So this is just basically showing that the majority of this section is made up of conglomerates. And, and um, being a, a good sedimentologist, Peter spent a lot of time sort of analyzing class types and class sizes and, and sort of class compositions and things like that and populations of all of that. But the bottom line is, again, uh, especially for the purpose of this, that this section is, is essentially was deposited in a series of braided rivers that were coming off, coming from the uh, coming from the north, the north and northeast, and flowing along the axis of the, of the Midland Valley towards the towards the southwest. And that's a just a modern analog there. That that image there, just a modern analog from New Zealand. But that's kind of without the volcanics. And probably without the farmland either, that's what this area would have looked like at the, at the, at the start of the Devonian. So, um, so from there we can sort of, you know, that's the sort of sedimentology, that's what makes up the majority of that. Um, we've got a little, this little guy here will pop up from time to time, that's Randy Marsh. Uh, he's the geologist out of South Park, but what you really need to know about Randy 
as he's 1.8 meters tall. So what we found is even I've been working with virtual outcrops, as I said previously, for about 20 years. And even when I work on, if I spend the winter working on a virtual outcrop that I've collected from Utah or Spain or somewhere like that, whenever I get the first thing that always strikes me when I go back to the real outcrop the next summer is how big it is compared to, 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 to what I'm sort of used to sort of looking at on the screen. So we, we, we put mark, we put various scales in, but this is this is one of our favorites. This is Randy. And we put the, the scale in just to give you the sort of scale of you know, the, to give you a little bit of perspective as to how big these sections uh, actually are. And these aren't particularly big cliffs, but but even then you see, you know, Randy looks a lot smaller probably than you than you thought he might do. So um, regionally, the bedding here, we can sort of stick in a couple of surfaces. Those are two surfaces. Now these surfaces I these I projected into the model here. This is the this is the top of the lava sequence. So that's the top. There are four distinct lavas interbedded with conglomerates in here. And each one of those basically that's the top of the first one. That's the top of the uh, the top of the uppermost one. So the section with lava in it is uh, is about 25 uh, sorry it's about 40 meters in, in thickness and as I say there are four discrete lava flows. We can look at the geological map of this um, just the, the B, this is just uh, taken from this from the uh, standard BGS map and the colors on the map unfortunately are not great but I've draped them over the model anyway and basically the the, the yellows in here are the this is the Corton volcanics and they are tracky andesites uh, and the, the really noticeable things about these volcanics is the, is the massive feldspar phenocrysts within them. They've got big aligned feldspar phenocrysts uh, and yeah and you can see the, the, the multiple different lava flows in there and then interbedded with that are the uh, sandstones and conglomerates shown in this kind of uh, in this slightly different orangey color. And if I was, you know, if I had a little bit more time, I would probably re you know, redraw this, redraw this map so that the colours were a little bit nicer. But this is basically just grabbed off the internet and then just draped straight onto the to the model. A little bit more information because this is a volcanic uh, field trip. A little bit more information on, on some of the volcanics. So this is the lowermost volcanics. You can see in here the this is a, a conglomerate surface in here. So there are literally you're walking across a a 400 million year old stream bed here with these massive pebbles and you can see the, the pop marks are basically where big cobbles and boulders have been uh, have been plucked out by erosion again you, you see the same thing in here and then sitting directly on top of that you see these really nice lavas this lava flow here that's a five meter scale bar for reference there you can see there is some columnar jointing within these which is also rotated uh, you can see that there are there are some sort of joints which I, as a sedimentologist, assumed was were kind of compensational stacking of different flows. But John Millet from Oslo, uh, he came out to the field with me one day and told me that this was no, this was all one big flow, uh, about nine meters thick, and, and that these were just effectively cooling joints. We can look at a little bit more detail. We can just pull up some photos. A uh, small child for scale. Again, you can see those surfaces which I thought were compensational stacking of different flows. But yeah, as I say, that's John says that that's not the case. Uh, and you can see you get a hint of the sort of columnar jointing in here. Uh, if we zip around in here, we see a little bit more detail of the uh, of dog for scale. Um, you can see the columnar jointing quite nicely with a little bit of folding. And again, that's one of those sort of cooling surfaces sitting in there. Um, that's that's the, the the base there, and then I think and there's also some quite interesting weathering within the within the kind of um, columnar jointing here, where the centre of the columns seems to weather out more and leave a, a harder chilled margin around the edge of the individual column. So you get this kind of uh, pentagonal uh, hexagonal pattern, um, polygonal sorry not pentagonal polygonal pattern sitting in here. Um, weathering out and I tell my children that we don't need to go anywhere we don't need to go to the Giants Causeway uh, because of lockdown we've actually got it all on our on our doorstep so that's just a, gives you a little bit of an idea of, of some of the detail of some of those lavas um, just to look at the sort of the sediment lava interaction if we just follow, fly to the other side of the bay um, we've got that that is the uh, that's the sort of top of the 
sorry, that's the top there of the uppermost lava. So there is a, there is a sort of conglomerate unit sitting in here. And again, if I, I you can see these conglomerates sitting in between the lavas. Um, that is that is that's the sort of contact here between you know these these rounded cobble cobbly conglomerate boulders here sitting on top of the sitting on top of the, the lava there and it's got a very irregular pitted surface and there are scour marks and pop marks in here that are that are filled with filled with erosion uh, filled with sort of sediment that came in after um, and this is just sort of showing some of those there, there's some sort of that's some of the lava and then that's actually a, 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 a pop mark or a pit that's then subsequently been filled in with sediment which actually includes boulders um, with some lavas with these large sort of feldspars and things sitting within them. And then the sediment lava interaction at the top there, you can actually see here, this is this is sitting on top, sort of indicating that literally these boulders were sitting on the surface and the lava has flowed over and, and enveloped them. So we, you can see where the, the lavas are sort of just gradually uh, enveloping the enveloping the clasps sitting in here so that's that's the that's the base that's literally at the base of the next lava lava flow above and I'm sure as I say I'm sure this will promote all sorts of uh, kind of questions remember you know the prime I'm happy to sort of talk about the geology here and everything as, as much as I know but um, the best thing I yeah my, my sort of um, the main reason for all of this is really to sort of just show you what's possible with the uh, with the with, with the technology so again five meter scale bar sitting in there so we're going to fly down the coast now we're going to go up stratigraphy slightly we're going to go from the croton volcanics up to montrose so this nice sandy beach here uh that is uh, about 20 20 kilometers south of us actually I, I should know that off the top of my head and there should be really be a scale but the distance from uh yeah so yeah 20 kilometers 18 18 kilometers further south along the coast and as I say a little bit up the stratigraphy we're going to go in and have a look at the um, down here we're going to have a look at this Cyrus section so if we zoom in there now if we sort of fly in there again same sort of idea here uh, we have a satellite photo just as a frame of reference underneath but then we have the virtual outcrops sitting in here this virtual outcrop is a little bit bigger it's about a kilometer long and about 70 meters high again there's a little house in there to give you uh, a, an idea of scale um, we're able to or what we do quite a lot is we, we look for content on the web so um, this is what we call a 360 photograph so if I click on that this is and this is literally provided by by, by Google and basically this is a view that somebody has uploaded to Google from this locality and it just gives you a, 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 a sort of 360 um, view of this specific outcrop and one of the one of the great things about you know building these outcrops uh, building these virtual field trips and things is is the amount of material that's literally just available that that, that is kind of free to use and things certainly for for non-commercial sort of teaching purposes and things so there is so that yeah that just gives you a sort of different impression of, of the locality so that's literally just taken from up in the air i'm presuming it was taken with a drone um, we can sort of put our own ones in there, but as I say, there is a lot of that sort of content already available. And um, now we're going to have a quick look at some of Malcolm Hole's uh, et al's logs. They've been working on this section for quite a few years. This is, uh, and again, we have the same sort of scenario where we have thick lava flows, which in this case are, are not very well exposed, interbedded with, with, again, with sediments. The sediments this time now are a little bit finer grained. Um, they're still quite coarse, but they're not sort of dominated by pebble and cobble and boulder conglomerates. Um, same sort of depositional environment, fluvial systems. And, 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 you know, Malcolm's work along here has really sort of highlighted a bunch of different sort of interactions between the, the sediment, the, the sediments and these lavas. Um, one sort of classic little section is just down here at the bottom. Um, we call this the, 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 the tricky log. We just need to wait for the, for the virtual outcrop to sort of load slightly here. It's streaming this data off the web. It's not sat locally. So sometimes there can be a slight delay. And, and basically this is this little section in here down in this little sort of um, four meter section in here. There's a really sort of interesting interaction between the, um, 
between the lavas and the sediments with 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 some of the lavas some of the some of the igneous material is actually um, intrusive and there are sort of lobes but then there are also cracks and things such as this that are filled in with mud sort of suggesting some sort of primary surface um, up here I think those are just sedimentary rocks yeah those are just literally just showing some of the sort of the, the sediments and that they are a bit finer grained and, and there's a con compendium of different sort of photos in here including these I'm, I'm sure somebody can do a better job of explaining these than me but these kind of quite strange blocks of lava that are sort of separated out and filled in between with sediments there's some some sort of little trackways in the sedimentary rocks and again similar sort of contacts to what we saw in Croton with, with lava sitting on, on, on top of sediment um, and then slightly further down or slightly further down stratigraphy and further down the beach is this outcrop and again we'll just wait for we'll wait for the models to load but there's Randy again just to give you a sort of idea of scale um, in fact while well, just while that's loading let me pull up and these are these are sort of made up with with much more sort of um, these kind of pahoe pahoe hoe and and uh, thin well they're described as thin bedded pahoe hoe and, and then there's also a, a bunch of um, I guess these are subaqueous pillow type lavas again I, I'm, I'm showing my sort of ignorance here but there's a much thicker section of, of, of lavas in here I think these are the more thin bedded uh, yeah these are the I think these are the sort of thin bedded ropey type lavas with very thin uh, with yeah with a lot thinner bedding in there so again forgive my igneous geology but again you can see from the model we can see quite a lot of this detail um, around here and, and you know at any point anybody doing the trip is also free so they don't have to just go to the localities they are free to sort of wander off and explore there's all these kind of impressive sort of vein systems in here um, yeah you can sort of explore the job the, the the textures and stuff and whilst these 3d models are, are not necessarily the best resolution they sort of pro certainly provide a, a, a regional context and so on for this um, we can also embed into this um, Malcolm et al have done a load of work on on flow thickness and composition so so there's no reason why we're just limited to putting in kind of spatial and log and whatever data we can put in any data these are sort of this is a graph that has something that's something to do with sort of flow thickness temperature and and, comp and different compositions so if we were using this for teaching we would we would just sort of you know, we might want to have a discussion about these thin bedded pahoe hoes here and sort of pull up the um, you know pull up these graphs and things and so we can just embed those into the into the model and you know just to, as a to, to, as a last stop really just to this is kind of Malcolm's summary from his paper, you know, just showing the there's the town, little town of St. Cyrus just behind there. And, you know, we so we looked at we went through that one section there looking at the sediment lava interaction. And we stopped in this what's called as the hoey hoey field in here. Uh, yeah, we could go and explore for the lava tubes and things if, if we wanted to. And then we're back into fluvial rocks at, at the end of the section. I think that's actually just probably just slightly off the off the model. So again it's this is not really about telling you about the sedimentology or the or the igneous geology or, or anything like that this is really just sort of showcasing the kind of things we can do with these with this with this software and how we would deliver a field trip so i just wanted to give you a short insight because basically if everything goes well today at the end of today you would be able to produce exactly what i've produced here so what we're going to do for the rest of this morning for the for the for the for the last sort of three hours or so is literally just take you through a little bit of background on virtual outcrops and everything like that but then take you through the process of how this was built and 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 obviously um it takes a little bit of time to get familiar with the software and things but once you are that virtual field trip was literally built probably in, in about half a day and i will take you through we will take you through the process of that now what we've done is prior to sort of prior to the start of today we, we 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 uploaded a little data pack it doesn't contain all of the information that is in here um i'm just going to end that so so yeah so we we, we kind of distributed a, a data a data pack which has some of the basic kind of information you would need and we also told you where to go and download line 
Um, if you don't have it already, um, it's got there is a nominal fee for it to cover the costs from the from the institution that developed it. That's more just covering kind of maintenance costs and things. Um, but but there is also a three month version that the, uh, the free version for you can get the free the free version for the first three months. So if you want to doubt if you hopefully if you are keen to follow, try and follow along, um, we you can download. You have already downloaded it and installed it. And then you can you can sort of run it um, and, and yeah follow along and, and try to sort of recreate what we do. If you don't want to do that or you haven't done that or you're watching on a Mac and you don't currently have access to a PC or whatever, that's no problem. Uh, you'll just have to sit and you can just sit and sort of listen and, and, and we'll present you know the process that we go through to, uh, to, to 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 do to do all of this. Okay. So uh, I don't know where the chat is on here. Is there any questions or anything before we we, we sort of proceed with the uh, with the um, with the main presentations? Is that clear? Is everybody happy with that? 